Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And what you're looking at here is an 11 by 14 inch canvas that's turned on landscape. Uh, I did a little tutorial on it earlier on how to do bushes. And right here, I had a winter uh, snowy little bush that I did. You can see that video if you're on the YouTube channel. So I went ahead and I took a paper towel and I just wiped it out because I said I'd come back and do a painting on this and I don't know what kind of painting I'm going to do yet, but I figured whatever it was, it didn't need no snow bush right there, so I took it out. Uh, ooh, from this perspective, I don't really know what I could do to really make it to make it look just really, really good. Uh, maybe come up here and put some clouds in the sky and maybe a light spot up there and maybe, you know, a couple, a couple more trees and that would give us a look like we were, I guess, standing on a ledge back here overlooking the these trees and bushes and just looking into the sky back in here. Well, ain't one thing to do and let's get into it and see what happens. I mean, that's, that's all we can do. All right. The colors I had out for that lesson was uh, listed in that video, but here they are. They're uh, titanium white, lizard crimson, dark sienna, sap green, Cat yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, the evil bright red, and I came back and added just a little phthalo blue in case I want to do a uh, lavender color. I don't know that I will, but just in case. All right, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to tap a little paint on my brush, on my one inch brush sideways, just like so. Just a very little paint. And I'll come up here and I'll just start making some just some little some little circles. Just just little circles here and there. Now this paint is kind of uh it's kind of dry. It's tacky at best. But I'm just going to come up here and add me a decent sized cloud. It don't have to be, it don't have to be enormous, but, you know, just something decent size across here. And then we'll kind of lift it up a little. Then I'll take and tap on just a little bit more. Not much, just a little bit. Then I'll come on this side and I'll add a, another little cloud and I'll just do it in a kind of a zigzag type motion just back and forth with the brush and just pull it out across here about like so. <clears throat> then I'll get a little more paint on my brush. Now, when I say a little paint, I showed y'all in that video when I say a little paint, how much I mean normally. And that's what this is, basically. It's just very little paint. Then I'll come over here and I'll I'll bring in another. I don't want I don't want none of these clouds just really screaming white right now. Just just barely pulling them in. To add a little color in the sky. You can see how that one, how it turned out, just, just like so, right above that tree. Then I'll add a little more paint, and then I'll come across here, and I'll just tap on some, some little small ones, little small clouds, just to make them look like they're, they're going to be off in the distance. Because I'm planning on putting a couple trees in here, and I hope that these trees, uh, 
I hope that these trees uh, go in front of some of these clouds. They will. And just like that. And then I'm going to take and knock this paint out on a napkin. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start grabbing this paint and just pulling it. Just pull it across. Just like so. Oh, I got a little of my yellow picked up. Look at there. Wow. Hmm. That don't look terrible, but I'm going to go ahead and try to get it out. But, I mean, it don't... <laughs> It don't look as bad as you would think, really. It kind of gives it a almost a sun effect in there. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get it out as much as I can. Probably going to leave some of that in there. I like the effect. About like so. Yeah, I kind of do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that alone. I kind of like that. That was a happy accident, I promise you. I did not mean for that to happen. Then we'll come up here and just just kind of blend this one on down a little. Not like so. And I'm going to say just like that, we've got a pretty effective sky. Enough that I'm going to quit on it. <coughs> Alright, I think right here, to cover this spot up, I'm going to go into my dark sienna, and I'm going to tap some paint on the corner of that brush. And I'll come in here, and just tap, and kind of kind of bring it down, and bring it on down until it touches that one. Kind of giving us a low spot in the middle. And then I'll bring this side on up. Just making sure they're all straight. Remember, we don't want leaned over bu uh, bushes or trees because they, <laughs> they're they going to look like they fell over. And that's just not what we're looking for right now. All right, about like so. Just to cover up this spot where we had the little Christmas bush or the little snow bush because it just it would not fit in this this little painting we're going to try to make something out of. I don't know what it'll end up being but something maybe. It may be a nightmare by the time we get done. You never know. I hope not, but hey, <laughs> it won't be the first time I've, I've painted, I can promise you that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean this brush and bring it over here to me. Oops, oops. Well, that did not work out for me. I'm going to bring it over here to my my beater bucket. Y'all saw it in the last video too, if you watched it. Now I need to make a decision here. I think I will pick up my my little my little brown brush and I'll carry it back into the uh, dark center and I'm gonna load it the same way, just tapping it straight on the brush with the trying to keep more paint up toward the top of the bristles and I think with this one I'll come out right here and I'll come straight up I want to get a lot of paint on here this time 
and it'll come straight up just like we did in the in the video the last video I'm just gonna come straight up and off the canvas this time just like so now I'm gonna bring the bring the top in like this just kind of kind of give it a big top and then come down and do that again under here but leave it kind of just trying to make a tree shape I mean that's all then come under it here come out a little further maybe across like this off the canvas then across here just like so Well, like that's all we need, I think. Then we'll take the little script liner. And I showed you how we done it. Come into the same color. Wiggle it around, get that, that ink-like consistency. Roll it around and pull it out to a point. And then come up here in the same color and just put on a couple limbs here and there. Just like so. Now when you're doing these trees, I think one thing that I failed to mention earlier was when you're doing these trunks or these branches in here, just always try to keep in your mind that the rest of your trunk is going to disappear back in here behind a bush. So with it disappearing back in here, you don't have to really worry about <coughs> painting a real in-depth type of type of trunk. I mean, it, it don't have to be the whole trunk. You don't have to draw the whole tree, more or less, is what I'm saying. And then for this tree, I think what I'll do is uh, this time is I'll pick up the the uh, little one inch oval brush, which is basically just a one inch filbert. Really, is all it is. And I'll touch just a little of the thinner and come over and shake that out. Then I'll come in here to my to my cad yellow, and I'm gonna put just a touch of green in it just like we did in that video earlier and I hate I keep saying that because a lot of you guys may not have seen that video but it's kind of short it's only like a I don't I don't remember it seems like it was like maybe maybe 20 minutes long maybe 15 20 minutes something like that it wasn't real long so if you get a chance, go watch that video and it'll kind of catch you up as to what I'm talking about here. Now this is uh, where you lay the brush down flat and push up. And I plan on doing a video on that before long. Because <clears throat> there's a couple instances where you do that. And uh, one of them is this and another one is like if you're doing the, the grass and you want that real lacy tight look. You can do that too. But now with this brush, just like just like doing it with the one-inch brush a while ago, it's a light touch. You just come up and touch. And just just come up here and just back. It's, it's an easy, delicate little touch and then pull right back off. It's not a... Uh, 
you know, you're not trying to smear the paint into it or anything. It's just a, a simple little touch and lift. The only difference with this brush than the one inch brush is this brush will give you kind of a roundness to your, uh, to your leaves because it's round. So when you touch, see how it gives it that, that little bit of roundness. And you just want to drop down under it. The ones you put above, just drop down under them a little. Leave yourself some dark. And just keep working down so you're not killing all that dark color. And if you have problems with it covering up a, a limb, Keep in mind that that limb is real thin. Remember, it was ink consistency. So if you have a problem trying to, with it covering that up, just make sure you got enough paint on your brush that when you touch it, it'll cover it up. Because covering them limbs up is a whole new illusion on its own. When you got paint that's going over your limbs, it'll push them out to you. And that is a, that's a real neat effect when it does that. It'll look like the branches are pointed towards you. All right, now that you've seen what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead now and try to, just try to speed things along here. But remember what I said, even though, even though I'm going a little faster, I haven't changed the, the amount of pressure I'm using. I'm just using a little more speed. And once you get to get used to how much pressure to use right here, you'll get you'll get faster and faster at it too. I mean, it, it's not a it, it's not hard. I mean, you'll. You do. You you get enough practice doing it. You'll you'll see what I mean. I mean you'll pick up that you'll pick up a brush and just bam in no time have it done basically. All right, I'm gonna drop that brush in the thinner. I'm gonna pick this one inch brush back up. Clean it out. Then I'm gonna go straight into. My yellow ochre color, and I want just the just the corner of it. See, just the top corner of it with the paint on it. If you can see that, there it is. Then I'm gonna come up here and drop down, and just start giving myself some some bush shape under here. like so now you can you can do this until it goes to running out of paint just come down until it goes to running out of paint and you can tell when it runs out of paint because it'll, it'll just it'll stop making that effect and once it stops making that effect it'll get you another color you know uh, whatever color you want to you want to swap over to At this point, you can go right back to the to the cad yellow and the green. At this point, it, it, as long as you don't have colors the same that are that are touching each other and and making them kind of running together, a really good painter, and I mean. The man is, and he is an excellent painter. Uh, I hate to call his name because he didn't give me, I hadn't asked him for permission. But he don't paint on YouTube. He paints, and he posts some paintings in the group, groups, not very often, but, I mean, he is, 
he is an incredible artist. He critiqued one of my paintings one time, and constructive criticism is what it was. He told me I created a tangent, and I didn't know exactly what he meant at the time. And uh, I started doing some research on it, and that tangent that he was talking about was two colors that meet that actually uh, don't show any separation at all. You couldn't tell that it was two separate trees. It just looked like a big blob of, of paint running into another big blob of paint. I didn't have any separator. I didn't leave no dark and I didn't change color. Well, ever since I did that, I started telling people when I would uh, go to talking to them in the, in the future, or like on these videos, you know, you'll hear me say it now. You got to have a separation in color. You got to have a different color. And if you're going to use the same color then leaving a dark is, is even more important. But you've got to have a separator in order to get any kind of depth at all. Now all I'm doing here is just swapping from yellow ochre to cad yellow to Indian yellow and I'm just mixing them all on the brush. And that's giving me a, a change in color every time I do it. And I'm being sure to leave enough dark in here that I can I can tell what I'm doing. And then I'm going to come back into the bright red. I'm going to come right here. Put in a little firecracker. Now I don't want to come in here with another red because I already got red right there. So... I guess what I could do is I could come up here and grab a little of that blue now and bring it down here, kind of make a kind of make a lavender color, cause red and, red and blue will make lavender. Just just remember, it does not take much blue. Blue is way more powerful than red. And we'll come right here and we'll give it a little bright purple one. Right there, just like so. <coughs> As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll bring that over just a little bit to close that gap up some. Not much because there's no dark under it, but about like that. Then I'll drop that brush in the thing. And then I think what we can do to really help our paint out is we'll pick up, I'm going to grab a filbert brush. That's what I'll do. I'll grab a filbert brush like this. If you can see that. This is a number six filbert brush. Finish that cup of coffee. Dipped it in just a tad bit of thinner. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go right into my dark sienna. I'm going to load it up on both sides. And then I'm just going to come I'm going to come down kind of at an angle but not really not really too sharp of an angle but there's going to be a little lean in this and I'm going to come right from the top and just work my way right through the canvas. Just like so. 
and then I'll knock a little of that paint out. And I'll come back and I will do that again. Just like so. The reason I got quiet is I'm concentrating here, trying to <laughs> trying to stay in this line. I don't want this tree to grow too much on me. I mean, it's already big enough. I don't want it. I don't want to get outside my lines here and end up with a tree that's six inches wide across here. That's plenty wide right there that I got. I just want to make sure I got this this trunk good and dark. And if it's not completely straight, I mean, I'm not going to cry about that. Like if it's got a little rough spots out on the edge. I just don't want these, uh, I don't want these spots that look dry brushed. Just like that. All right, now, whoo, <laughs> that was uh, that's kind of breathtaking. Let's see, Bob would put in a little, little friend right here, but I'm thinking he can be friendly with these. You know, he can be friends with that one and that one. Okay, now I don't know if the camera's short or not, but right here. See that? That little smeared spot where I came through the sky a while ago? And I picked this color up. Alright, to fix that, I'm going to go right back into my yellow. On a fan brush. Just like that. Just a little bit of yellow. Very little bit. And I'm going to come back up here. And I'm just going to touch this color. Just like so. And just touch it. And then I'll come around the side here a little. And then maybe right here a little. And if nothing else, what that does is it gives these some highlights to make them look like the sun maybe hitting them a little. We're going to take a bad thing and turn it into a good thing right there. Is basically what we're doing. And then you just take, put a little thinner on that and knock that color right out. Wipe it off on a napkin. You don't have to go through no real big thorough cleaning on that. On that little bit of paint. Alright. Now. Whew. Now it's time to pick up the script liner again. And we're going to go right back into our, our dark sienna. Just like we did earlier. We'll get that ink-like consistency. But now you want to be careful this time because you don't want it too thick. I mean too thin. Because if you do, when you go up here to this tree, it's going to run down. And we don't, we really don't need it doing that if we can keep from it. All right. We'll start out right up here at the top. And we'll come down just a little. And we'll come out and down and kick us a kick us a limb around like so. And then on this one we'll come down. We'll come down a little ways and we'll do the same thing. We'll kinda just wiggle the brush and give us a kick. Just a little kick out. And we'll pick up a little more paint. And we'll come on this outside edge again. We'll come down a little ways. We'll give ourselves another little, another little limb, and you can basically see what I'm doing now. I'm just, I'm just doing this in different spots across here. That's going to be a little bit thicker right through here, just 
just like so. Just shake that brush just like so. We'll come on down a little further and we'll, we'll give us another one about like so. And we'll make it a little We'll make it a little thicker right through here. Because if it's going to hold up all that, it's going to have to, it's going to, have, to have some, some mass to it. I said mass. I put an M on it. <laughs> Alright, then we'll come down over here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll kick him out and around like so. We'll give him a little mass. Well, it's not wanting me to, but I'm going to, whether it wants it or not. Just like that. So then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to fix this one now. I think it needs a... Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to join this one up to the tree. Just like so. Now, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to work. I'm going to move my hand back a little bit on this. I'm going to go to work now on adding some... And some branches on here. Just like so. <coughs> and we'll come up here on this one. We'll kick it out. We'll come down. We'll kick out this way and this way. Like so. Then we'll come up here on this little feller. We'll kick out on him in a couple different places. About like so. Same thing on this side. We'll come in here and just give him a couple little couple of branches here and there. About like so. Same over here. I'll bring this one out like this. Maybe one in here like so. Then on the big one down here, we'll bring it out. Give him a little kick out. And then we'll We'll add a couple to him right through here, like so. Now on the tree itself, we want to come out and just put a couple little, just put a couple little stick out points here and there. Just something to just kind of make it stick out a little here and there. About like so. that brush all right now we're going to pick up doo -doo -doo -doo, a number six fan brush I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna pull straight through pulling out just a little bit of paint sap green on my 
straight sap green on my fan brush on both sides, just like so. And I'm going to come up here to these limbs, and I'm going to come up here with just a corner, and I'm going to tap on some some green paint out here on the out here on the edges and just over my branches in a couple places, just like so, and just kind of give it a, a just just a look, you know, just a little. And then I want to do the same over here, you know, out here on the end, just kind of make it look smaller. And then come across here and just give it a, that upward little look, like so. Right through here, you can do it again. Not like that. And then on this one here, we're going to do the same thing. Just give it an upward little, little push here and there. Just to make it, make it join up with its, with its other one down here. About like so. And then right here, we're going to bring it across the tree a little. See how we did that? Now it may not show as good right now as we'd want it to, but when we come back with our highlight, it'll it'll pull it out. You'll see. It'll, it'll just pop that right off of that tree like that. As a matter of fact, right up here, we're going to do the same thing again. We'll, we'll bring that across the tree. And right here we'll do the same thing again. This will, this will give you tree uh, that roundness effect. Then we want to come out here and give it some some little leaves out here or needles, whatever you want to call them on a on these pines, needles or not like so. And it's not it's not every one of them that we're covering up the entire branch. Like this one, we won't cover this entire branch. We'll come out here on the end of this one and we'll give it a little cluster. Then we'll drop down and do it again. See how it gives that branch a a total different look by not covering up the entire branch. Just like so. And then we'll come up here and we'll just touch right in here like it's got another branch hanging off headed this way. And just like that, we've pretty much done all I want to do to that tree as far as the dark color. Now for the light color. We're going to come in and wash it out. We're going to come right into our cad yellow. It's got all them other colors in it. It's got, it's got Indian yellow. It's got yellow ochre, it's got a little green, it's got all these colors in it. And that's perfectly okay. All right, well now when we come up here to highlight these, we're gonna do them the same way. But I wanna start with the ones that's inside the tree. And the reason for that is, is that color is, is thicker. Well, there's a good example of it. I bet you can't see it on the camera. But it's going to pick that green up because this paint is thicker in here. It had to be a little thicker to, uh, in order for us to get it to go over the all that brown. So if we start right in here with our highlights first, we can about ensure that they're going to be seen. 
and then once we get that little bit highlighted we can we can wash this brush again shake out that thinner and come back up in here into our yellows and pick up a little bit more to green just like so and then when we come up here to highlight these it's just a just a real light touch just here and there these don't require a lot of highlight because it is evergreens we just want a little we just want a little flavor of uh, just a little flavor of highlights in here not much at all now that's not to say that you know the less highlight the better but we just don't want a lot we want, we want to be able to tell it got highlighted, but we don't need a ton to be effective in here. Because these are evergreens. But you just want to, what little bit of highlight you do apply, you want to you wanna apply it in the same way that, that you uh, applied the leaves. You remember how we did those? We just pushed up. And that's basically all we want to do over here. Is just come in here and push up here and there. Just like so. Just staying in the same little pile of yellow here. That's all I'm doing. Just like so. About like that. That's all we want. Just like that. Now we're gonna have a little fun because we're gonna clean this. We're gonna clean this fan brush up, and we're gonna go ahead and dry it and put it back up for now. Then I'm gonna pick up a little number three fan brush, just like this, a little small one. If you can, if you can see this, there it is. All right, so now I'm gonna go right into my titanium white, and I'm gonna tap it off the brush over here on the side. Just tap it off, and I'm gonna pick up a little Indian yellow, and I'm mixing these two colors together for that sunshine color that I'm always talking about. And I don't want it, I want it more kind of toned down. So I don't want it real, real yellow. And I don't want it real, real white. I want them about 50-50. Like so. Now I got that brush loaded. So I'm going to come up to this tree. And I'm going to assume the light's coming from this side. So... I'm going to come up here on this outside edge and I'm just going to touch in a couple places in here where these limbs are kind of allowing light to get through. Just like so. I'm going to touch in a couple places. Just like that. Give it a highlight on this side. Then we'll come back up. And I'm going to keep tapping up and down through here until it gets over into that dark sienna and starts fading away. Because I want texture in here. And the further I come around that tree, it's going to pick up more dark. And the more dark it picks up, the better. Just have to work it out. Just kind of just kind of let this color fade in. Before going to load back up, just kind of let it blend in with that dark sienna. Even if it means having to go back over here and, and touch.
touching some of the heavier spots of dark sienna. Whatever you have to do, just let it, just kind of let it blend down. Until you get around the tree. Until you get on this side. And that's going to make your tree have that rounded look. But it'll also give you a highlight. So then come back in here. Touch into your color again just a little bit. Come up here. And basically do the same thing. Just in different spots. Just give yourself more. More highlight here and there. Until it gets over to the side. Any Anywhere you can sneak in. A little of the highlight under your your green uh, limbs without picking up a lot of the green or without disturbing a lot of it. Just go in there and pick you up some. Just, you know, go in there and put your highlight in here and there. Because all it's going to do is just add, add that roundness to the tree. That's all it's going to do. Then you come up here and start just tapping this one in. Just working it around. Just like so. And another thing this will do to that tree is it'll add texture. And when this paint dries, you come up here and touch it and you'll be able to feel it. And then just like this, same thing. As you come around, just let it fade away, just like so. And that's all you got to do. And it'll just give that tree that that natural look, like it's just like the sun's just tearing it up out there. <laughs> And then, from there, we're going to clean this little brush out. And we're going to take a paper towel and kind of dry it off a little bit. So I want to come right back up here and touch into the thalo blue just a little bit. I want to come on this outside corner here. And we want to come down and give ourselves a little, a little of that blue over here. And then wipe it out. And then come back and just bring that blue in and around a little until it starts fading out. Just bring it in and around. Just in and around a little bit. And that'll give us that, that shadow reflective light look that we want and that'll really add a whole lot of life to it and it does not take a lot of blue for this this is phthalo blue and it's strong and if you're not careful it'll get over in that yellow and it'll turn it green and quick and you got a whole lot of problems on your hands and all we're doing is we're coming up here and we're just touching it until it just starts fading out. We can still tell it's blue, but we're also losing it, that color. And we're losing that color because that brown under it is toning it down. And you can come out on that limb just a little, and it'll give that that little fuzziness. Because you know these, these trees have a, they have kind of a fuzziness to them. When they're when they're growing they just I don't know what that is but they just they kind of look fuzzy so you know if you give your tree that that fuzziness look while you're doing this then you're doing the right thing because they don't have to have no straight line and that's for sure but just like that and to me that just looks like you know, like we're standing over here on this side, just looking across at a little simple painting that, you know, we got a skyline, basically, is, is all we got. And 
we added us a big tree in the middle. We got a, another tree over here and this tree with a, you know, some trees under them. But this is our focal point. You know, it, this is our, our star of the show. <clears throat> and just like that, I mean, I know I wanted it to be a little quicker than that, but hey, we turned it into a decent little painting. Didn't take us too long. All right, I will go into the thinner now. And I think a good color for this one would be our sunshine color that we had left over here. And I'll come over here in this little bush and I'll put an H of sunshine in it for happy. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Uh, I really hope y'all enjoyed the, the big tree. I don't think I've done many of those in a video yet. Uh, these are real fun trees to do. I mean, they are so much fun. Uh, and however many of them you want to put in a painting, you know, like if you wanted to do three or four of them in a painting, the more you do, the funner they get. Uh, they're not real hard to do. You've seen how hard it was. I mean, uh, if you need me to do another tutorial on, on, you know, maybe on some evergreen trees or whatever, let me know and I'll add these trees in it and we'll do the, the trees that Bob always does with the fan brush where he zigzags and then we'll do some with the, where they're turned up, the bristles are turned up on those evergreens and maybe even a, a like a tall, uh, what am I trying to say? Like a tall cedar looking tree that'll be green. But if y'all like to see stuff like that, just let me know in the comments. I mean, y'all got to let me know what you want to see or, you know, I don't know. Uh, stuff like this, you, you may not even care anything about something like that. I mean, you, you may say, well, that's, it don't make sense. And it don't. You know, it's a simple little painting that, you know, it just kind of looks like you walked up, came up on a hilltop and looked across and and saw that and just decided, wow, I want to paint that. And you did, you know. But anyway, remember guys, I love y'all. Couldn't do none of it without you. Would be pointless to. Uh, like, share, subscribe. We are growing a little bit, which is a good thing. Uh, I love you guys. God loves you more. And just remember... Paint to be happy and have a really blessed night. See you next time. Painting with Harold.